Now while it's undeniably life affirming to have a stupendously beefy 7 incher stashed in your pants, sadly not all of us are so blessed. After all, the mightiest flagships these days cost well over a grand. But no worries my fiscally challenged chum because on a tighter budget you can still snaffle a shiny wee mid-range smartphone boasting excellent optics, ridiculously good battery life and enough game and grunt to blaze through heavyweights like Genshin Impact. So here's my personal pick of the best mid-range smartphones right now, mobiles that I've personally tested out and reviewed right here on Techspert and for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now first up, if you really fancy one of Google's flagship phones but you can't afford that asking price, well you can save yourself a few quid and grab the Pixel 7a instead. Despite being cheaper, it's almost exactly as good as the regular Pixel 7 flagship. Sure those materials aren't quite as premium, but the Pixel 7a looks just as stunning as its flagship brothers and the hand feel is truly magnificent. The brains of this mini mid-ranger is once again the Tensor G2 chipset and yes this does mean that the Pixel 7a gets a bit warm to the touch at times, but this phone can happily run anything you chuck at it, even games like Genshin. That dinky 6.1 inch OLED screen is another 90Hz slice of eye please in heaven, while the stereo speaker setup ain't too shabby either. And the software side of course is just as satisfying as always, you've got those lovely stock Android vibes, no heavy clunky launchers chucked on top, you've got excellent security and privacy features and of course, as it's Google, years of software support. Plus you will struggle to find a better smartphone snapper at this sort of price. Between the fresh 64 meg quad bay camera sensor and the Tensor's slick image process and smarts, you will once again be treated to great looking pics even in some pretty rough conditions. However, be warned that the Pixel 7a's battery life isn't quite as good as some of the other blowers in this best mid-range mobile roundup, so if you're rarely seen without your smartphone in hand, you might want to consider something else. Now, one of the Pixel's most impressive rivals at this sort of price is the OnePlus Nord 2T, which boosts the overall performance for any proper gaming fans out there. The OnePlus Nord 2T is powered by MediaTek's Bicep Flex and Dimensity 1300 chipset, which can absolutely blaze its way through any Android game out there. Good old Genshin is handled with nary a bead of sweat, helped along by those dedicated gaming tools. You've once again got yourself an OLED screen, this time a 6.43 inch AMOLED panel, with the added bonus of a faster 90Hz refresh rate, as well as another decent enough stereo speaker setup. So the OnePlus Nord 2T is just as great for kicking back with some Netflix action or your favourite bold tech twat. The Nord 2T's 4500 mAh battery serves up enough screen on time to make it through a pretty long intensive day even for fairly demanding users and it also supports 80 watt fast charging when you bung a cable in it as well which is pretty ridiculous at this sort of price point. Oxygen OS is as customizable as ever with the guarantee of a few years of software updates to keep it fresh and secure. And while that 50 meg primary camera sensor can't quite capture pics as cleanly and as capably as the Pixel, it is still well up to the job of everyday snaps and sharp looking home movies. You can grab yourself the Nord 2T at a great price on the OnePlus UK website. It has actually been succeeded by the OnePlus Nord 3, but when it came to the official launch OnePlus was like, do one mate to Blighty. You can actually grab one now in the UK again from that OnePlus website. Unfortunately I haven't had a chance to actually test it out yet. And also if your budget can't quite stretch to these Nord smartphones, well no worries, for a bit less cash you can grab yourself a OnePlus Nord CE3 Lite. It might be cheaper but it's still a very capable wee bugger. The design has been downgraded to plastic but spruced up a bit with a lovely lime paint job, while the OLED screen is swapped out for a more basic LCD panel. However, those visuals are still sharp and the refresh rate is boosted to 120Hz. You once again have a stereo speaker set up, this time with added headphone jack goodness. Well that sizeable 5000mAh capacity battery means all day play, no worries unless you absolutely torture the living heck out of this thing, complete with nippy 67W fast charging when you do run dry. Gaming is smooth and satisfying on lighter titles like PUBG and Call of Duty Mobile and even Genshin Impact if you keep the graphics settings low helped along again by that gaming mode. While the Snapdragon 695 chipset handles everything else just as capably. Even the 108 meg camera is a bit of a cracker, serving up good looking pics in all kinds of difficult conditions. Now while Samsung's Galaxy S24 flagships are the best part of a grand or well over in the case of the Ultra, they do have some decent more affordable mid-range options including the Galaxy A54. 
That glass finish looks and feels almost as premium as the S24 with a choice of four colours. All of them rather awesome if you're inclined to believe Samsung's naming scheme. Is this awesome line model actually awesome? Am I in awe right now? No, it's just rather pretty. However, I do absolutely adore the IP67 dust and water resistance, which is tricky to find at this price outside of the Pixel phone. And Sammy fans will enjoy the feature-filled One UI 5 experience that's not too different from those flagship blowers. And like Google with its Pixel phone, Samsung has guaranteed several years of Android OS and security updates with the Galaxy A54, so you shouldn't have to replace it anytime soon. The 6.4 inch 120Hz Super AMOLED screen gets a thumbs up, chucking out sharp Full HD Plus images complete with Samsung's trademark colours that positively pop. Although you can opt for a more natural output if you want. It's definitely a good in for your Disney Plus and your Netflix and your Crunchy Roll and all that good stuff. You've even got micro SD memory card support and a bit of NFC action of course for your contactless payments, although there's no headphone jack action, boo, hiss, etc. And likewise, I found that the 5000 mAh capacity battery can keep you going all day long, no worries. Now, thankfully, despite being powered by another Samsung chipset, the Galaxy A54 serves up a much smoother everyday experience than the older A53, even coping quite well with Genshin Impact and heavier gaming titles. And Samsung has even upgraded the camera tech for this year's model, so it's a bit better in lower light. Although that lethargic shutter speed can scupper some of your shots of living subjects. Alternatively, for a slightly cheaper price than the S24s, you could also grab yourself the Samsung Galaxy S23 FE, where the FE stands for f***ing Exodus. Or at least it should do. It's not a bad blower by any means, but those Exodus brains means that it is a bit underpowered for the price. It's beaten into a pulpy mess by the phone I'm about to talk about in the performance department. There's definitely other options in this roundup that I far prefer, but if you see it at a discount, definitely check it out. Now, one of the more distinctive smartphones at this price range is the Nothing Phone 2A, which starts from just over 300 quid and again offers some decent specs to rival the Pixel. This slightly chunky smartphone sports a simplified glyph finish compared with the full-priced Nothing Phone 2, this time surrounding the rehoused camera hardware. But you still got that full notification support, the nifty countdown timer, and other literally flashy features. Now, sadly, there's no wireless charging support here, unlike the original Nothing Phone, but at least that battery life is easily good enough to last you a full day, even with proper intensive all day use. That OLED screen is a delight, and the stereo speaker setup is not rubbish, so you can happily put your feet up and enjoy some video type shenanigans or a bit of gaming on the go. Speaking of which, thanks to the custom MediaTek chipset which runs the show here, that Nothing Phone 2A is nippy enough to play any game out there, Genshin Impact included, even when you max out those graphics. Nothing's camera setup is suitably streamlined, so there's no pointless macro nonsense etc. And it's decent enough to grab good luck in pics and home movies, even in reasonably tested conditions. And Nothing OS is certainly grown on me. That black and white finish proves less distracting than regular Android, Although, of course, the flashy glyph shenanigans more than makes up for that when you flip this bad boy over. And alternatively, if you do have a bit more cash to spunk on your shiny new blower, we'll definitely check out the fully-fledged Nothing Phone 2. The Nothing Phone 2 is powered by the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, which should mean smoother performance for longer. While the slightly larger battery combined with that energy-efficient chipset means you'll get a wee bit longer out of every charge. You've got a bigger, brighter display, you've got an upgraded rear and front camera, and that Glyph Disco Lighting has been redesigned with even more zones than before, plus some nifty new features. It's certainly a solid rival to the likes of the Pixel 7, and my full review is live right now. Now, Vivo phones are a bit tricky to get a hold of here in Blighty, but the Vivo V30 and V30 Pro are well worth rummaging around for, especially if you fancy some posh pants ultra slim design. Just maybe don't get this here colour, which kind of resembles my Nana's bathroom tiles. Both Vivo blowers dish up a spacious 6.78 inch AMOLED screen with pin sharp 1.5K resolution, plus HDR10 plus support if you fancy some of that. Sadly, it is a mono speaker situation on these Vivos, but besides that, the V30s are cracking for watching your favourite bald retrobit wibbling on about tech. The regular model has a Snapdragon 7 Gen 3 stuffed inside providing that performance, whereas the Pro model upgrades to MediaTek's Dimensity 8200. 
Both can happily cope with Genshin Impact, though only the Pro model doesn't destroy its Y fronts when you chuck it onto the higher graphics. And despite those cooling layers, they'll both definitely warm your hands a bit. But no matter your choice, Vivo crams in a cracking selection of gaming tools. And both Vivo V30s have a respectably sized 5000 mAh capacity battery stuffed inside with a very nippy 80 watt fast charging support, although sadly no wireless charging. You've got a 50 meg camera slapped on both, although the Pro upgrades from an Omnivision to a Sony sensor, complete with Zeiss Brandon. And regardless, both models will shoot decent looking family snaps and both rock Vivo's fancy Aura Flash, which can be manually adjusted to make the tone warmer or colder. Now, if you want a fancy looking blower stashed in your shorts, but you don't want to pay premium prices, well, the Honor 90 is well worth a squint. It's a proper stunner with a curvy design that's also pleasingly tough. And it's good to see Honor offering three years of software updates here as well, although admittedly not everyone will get on with that Magic OS launcher. It's a wee bit bulky at times and frankly it does occasionally get on my tits. Still, you've got loads of storage to make up for the lack of memory card support, while that 6.7 inch AMOLED screen is sharp, supremely bright and creamy smooth, topping off at 120Hz. Audio is less impressive however, as the Honor 90 only serves up a single solitary speaker. But power is provided by an accelerated Snapdragon 7 Gen 1 which can capably cope with any game you chuck at it. A massive vapour chamber helps to keep the Honor 90 nice and cool when you're smashing 10 bells out of hairy hill goits in Genshin, and you've got yourself loads of gaming tools to make your violent virtual shenanigans even more enjoyable. Despite that slender frame, Honor has somehow managed to cram a 5000 mAh capacity battery inside of the Honor 90, so I found I never ran out of juice. Suddenly I had plenty left in the tank when I was clambering into my PJs at night time. And you got pretty nippy 66 watt wired recharging speeds as well, although admittedly no wireless recharging here. As for that 200 meg primary camera, well, it's not bad at all for everyday shots with decent HDR chops. Although photos can look a wee bit flat, and bright vibrant colours don't really pop the way that I really hoped they would, while softer lighting makes for quite grainy pics. If photography is a priority, you'll be better served by that pixel for sure. Now one of the best manufacturers out there when it comes to beefy hardware for not much dough is Xiaomi, so definitely check out its fresh new Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus. This is yet another beefy 6.67 incher, this time with a slightly curved screen as well as a leather style finish. And if you don't like this patchwork colour effort, you can grab the Note 13 Pro Plus in basic black or white as well. That frame may be constructed from plastic, but you've got a tough bit of Gorilla Glass Victus for the front end, and this phone is IP68 water and dust resistant, so it can get very moist indeed, can even survive a quick tumble into a bubbly bath or a sink or whatever. Of course, not everyone will get on with the crapware laden MIUI slash HyperOS software, but at least you've got 256 gigs of storage here. And that 6.67 inch OLED isn't just sharper than older models, it's also super bright. You've got a MediaTek Dimensity 7200 Ultra running things with 12 gigs of that RAM stuff to help keep your apps and games running as well as possible. So I, Genshin Impact, won't have this phone evacuated its metaphorical bowels. You've also got a 120 watt battery charging here, so this thing powers up faster than it'll take you to scoff a bowl of shredded wheat. Although sadly, once again, no wireless charging support. And while the 200 megapixel primary camera might sound mightily impressive, don't expect anything special. It's a perfectly fine snapper for capturing precious memories and sharing them with absolute strangers on social media. Alternatively, for a few pun less, you can grab the Redmi Note 13 Pro 5G which may lose the plus plaudits, but it's still a bit of a mid-range corker. It's not as water resistant and the battery charge is a bit slower, but the only other change is the chipset. That 7200 Ultra has been swapped out for Qualcomm's Snapdragon 7S Gen 2. Gamers will prefer the pricier plus model for demand and fare like Genshin, but you can still give it a bloody good go on the Pro 5G, as long as you keep the graphics settings skilled down. And if you fancy livening up your afternoon with some sweat inducing three-way action, well, I've compared the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus, the Pro 5G, and the non-Pro models side by side right here on Techspert. And if you've got a wee bit more cash to spunk out on your next blower, well, I would heartily recommend the Xiaomi 13T. This also looks proper smart with its fake leather finish, although there is a glass model if you don't really fancy it. And it's once again a water-resistant finish for those moist moments. 
And the Xiaomi 13T also comes with a bit of added peace of mind with five years of security updates and four years of OS updates as well, plus that same generous 256 gigs of storage. That 6.67 inch AMOLED screen is similar to the Redmi's, but this time you got both HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision support. And that peak brightness is higher and the refresh scales all the way up to a creamy smooth 144 Hz. Fantastic news for any gamers. Speaking of which, that performance is also a step up thanks to MediaTek's Dimensity 8200 Ultra, which is kept nice and cool thanks to Xiaomi's stainless steel vapor chamber shenanigans. However, when you drain that 5000 mAh capacity battery, you are refilling with comparably slow or 67 watts so-called hypercharge. I mean, that's being rather facetious. It's still super fast compared with what you get on a Samsung, a Google, an Apple phone, which costs you know twice as much. Although still bugger all wireless charging support here. And while that 50 meg main camera may sound like a bit of a downgrade, you do have some proper Leica processing smarts which help to produce sharp, detail-packed snaps at pretty much any time of day. Plus a very respectable feature-packed Pro mode and a 50 meg telephoto camera for getting a bit closer to the action. So overall, the Xiaomi 13T is a bit of a banger and well worth that mid-range asking price. Now an alternative to Xiaomi that also offers most of the same advantages and disadvantages is Poco. The Poco Blows are essentially reskinned version of Xiaomi phones using very similar hardware and almost identical software. And this plucky pair, the Poco X6 and the Poco X6 Pro, might give you a slight hint of deja vu. They're yet more 6.67 inch hand fillers with 1.5k displays and stereo blasters, as well as the same size batteries. Although that charger is locked at 67 watts for both. The Poco X6 once again rocks the Snapdragon 7S Gen 2, so go easy on that Genshin. While the Pro version this time has a Dimensity 8300 Ultra, some serious smarts for sure. As for the 64 meg camera, well this does pump out different photo results depending on which Poco is packed into your pants. Now you can see the results by checking out my Poco X6 versus Poco X6 Pro comparison which is live right now on Techspert and absolutely smashing if I do say so myself. And any gaming fans out there looking for a dependable mid-range device should have a proper squint at one of my favourites, the Poco F4 GT. This absolute unit is powered by Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, which can blaze its way through any Android title out there. And when I say blaze, I mean it almost literally, that 8 Gen 1 does get a wee bit toasty when it's under duress, but thankfully Poco's cooling tech deals with that nicely. The gaming chops are further cemented by some very handy pop-up shoulder triggers, which can really take the pain out of more complex titles. Plus, the 4,700 mAh capacity battery means you can game for a good few hours on this Poco phone before you'll need to plug it back in, while the 120 watt charging support means you can power this bugger right back up to full in less time than it takes for James Corden to annoy the living piss out of me. Poco's 6.67 inch AMOLED display is a proper stunner, bold and bright with full Dolby Vision support, and compatible games can enjoy up to a 120Hz refresh rate for a fluid finish. There's also Dolby Atmos action with crisp audio spaffed out by the quad speaker arrangement. A pair of fresher mid-range options for 2023 are the Poco F5 and Poco F5 Pro, which cost around 70 quid more. These beasts are nearly 6.7 inches in size and similar in many ways. For instance, they both sport a 64 meg camera with optical image stabilization, backed by an 8 meg ultra wide angle lens and a 2 meg macro shooter. Although the Pro can shoot 8K video thanks to the beefier chipset that's stuffed inside. You got a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 running the show on the Poco F5 Pro, which was the brains of many a flagship phone just last year. So, unsurprisingly, this meaty mid ranger is a fantastic option for gamers. But that said, the Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 that powers the bog standard Poco F5 is still more than nippy enough to handle the biggest Android games. Both of these Pocos rock a 120Hz AMOLED screen, although the Pro's panel is sharper, brighter and boasts Dolby Vision support. And either way, you've got a stereo speaker setup and a generous 256 gigs of storage. The regular Poco 5 does have one upper on its more expensive sibling as well and the fact that it's actually got a headphone jack which is an increasingly rare feature in 2023 for any mobile. You won't find one of those on the Pro for instance. 
The Pro's battery is a smidge bigger than the regular Poco F5s, but both will last you a long intensive day on a single charge, no worries at all. And you've got nippy 67 watt wired recharging, although only the Pro can be charged wirelessly. So overall, two cracking phones boasting brilliant specs for a mid-range price, as long as you don't mind all of that MIUI shenanigans. So that right there, my lovelies, is my pick of the best mid-range mobiles you can grab yourself right now. But do not fear if your budget is still a little bit too tight for most of these, because I have rounded up my favourite sub-300pound and sub-200pound smartphones you could grab right now. So if you go to check all those out, please do plug subscribe, ding that notification bell for more on the latest and greatest tech, and have yourselves a really wonderful rest of the week. Cheers!